Okay, so um, we were talking about electrons. Um, before we get into electrons, uh, which is pretty much all we're going to talk about today, I just want to go ahead and refresh your guys' memory about uh, what we were talking about in terms of what the periodic table is telling us, right? So this number in the top left-hand corner, sorry, you can't see it, um, what is that number called? Atomic number. atomic number. It's called the atomic number, and what does it represent? Protons. The number of protons and the number of electrons in a neutral atom, right? Atoms are always neutral. If they have a different number of electrons and protons, what do we call them? Ions. Yes. Ions, exactly, exactly. Um, we said this number down here at the bottom of the box, what's that called? Atomic weight. The atomic weight. Atomic mass. Not to be confused with the atomic mass, which is the number of protons and neutrons, right? The atomic weight is the weighted average of all of the isotopes, right? So the atomic mass will always be, for a given isotope, how many neutrons and protons do you have, right? Everybody comfortable with that? I thought that was the atomic number. The atomic number is the number of protons. Atomic, okay. num atomic number is this guy right up top? Yeah. This is the atomic weight, which is the weighted average <laughs> of all of the uh, isotopes weighted by their, uh, their abundance, mm -hmm. right? The atomic mass would be given for a particular isotope, right? And it would represent the total number of protons and neutrons. Sure. So, for example, I could have uranium-238, right? This would be the atomic mass. And we can see, looking at uranium, that the atomic weight is close to that, right? But it's not the same thing. And again, that's because there are different isotopes of uranium, right? So if this is the atomic mass, and we know what the atomic number is, which is 92. 92, right? Then we can take 238, oops, 238, minus 92, right? And how many neutrons do we have? 146. Is everybody comfortable with that? I think your fan is blowing into the speaker. Oh, cool. Thanks. <laughs> uh, is that better? Someone. Okay. I'm <laughs> so sorry, you guys. So um, my AC went out this weekend. <laughs> so I am miserable and hot and pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> the worst weekend that it could have gone out? Well, it went out on Monday, so technically not the worst day that it could have happened. So, so I'm trying to, like, be thankful that it, it only broke on, on the day that it was the worst, but it was working on that day, so. <sighs> <laughs> to find the number of neutrons, you're always going to take the atomic weight and subtract it with the atomic number? Atomic mass. Atomic mass. Yes. yes. Yeah. So I think co uh, colloquially, like in, in, in regular kind of language, we use the word mass and weight to, to basically mean the same thing, right? But when we get into to science -y definitions, we are very careful with those words, right? Because they mean different things. Okay? Uh, okay. Yeah. There's a lot of annoying stuff like that in chemistry, <laughs> where we take a word that you know or that you thought you knew, and then we're like, just kidding, it only means this little thing. This other word over here means this other thing. So, so yeah. So weight is going to be the weighted average. Mass is going to be the protons and neutrons, the number of protons and neutrons combined. Questions? So say you were like, find the neutrons you would subtract the 
weight from the protons, and then you would add those two together to get the mass. So, so if you so if you were given the number of protons and the number of neutrons, right, and you were asked for the atomic mass, you would add those two together to get the atomic mass. Right, but what if you asked for, okay, what if, but what if you asked for the neutrons first and didn't provide the neutrons? Would we so, subtract the atomic weight from the atomic? So let's look at, there's, there's two basic forms of how this question is going to be asked of you, right? So one type of question would be, um, let's say I gave you um, an atom that has 36 protons, and 42 neutrons, right? And I ask you to write the isotopic nota isotopic <laughs> notation, right? So just a reminder, the isotopic notation has the symbol, right, for the chemical um, that we're dealing with for the atom or element that we're dealing with. It has A, which represents the atomic mass, the atomic mass and Z, which represents atomic number. the atomic number. Perfect. So, if that's what we're looking for here, right, how can I figure out what X is here? Look for the atomic number. Use the protons too. We use the number of protons, right? The number of protons we were given was 36. So what is our chemical symbol? Cryptonic? Krypton. 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 So Krypton. this is a really important distinction, guys. Just because we know that the full name is Krypton, this represents the symbol, right? So, always we use the symbol here, not the full name. Does that make sense? So when you see this on a quiz, right, you're going to give me the symbol for X, not the full name. Everybody with me? Yes. Cool. That's going to be important. Now, Z is the atomic number, a.k.a. Protons. The number of protons. So what's going to go down here? 36. 36. And so the last one that we need is A, which is the atomic mass, right? And how do we find the atomic mass? You add the protons and the neutrons together. Exactly. So what number that is going to go? 78. 78. Blamo. Right? Everybody okay with that? So, one of the things that I could do to be confusing on a problem like this is uh, give you the number of electrons. Does the number of electrons have anything to do with isotopic notation? No. No, right? If you're given the number of electrons, right, um, the only thing that that's going to tell you is whether or not you have an ion or a neutral atom, right? But again, that does not affect the isotope. Is everybody with me? Didn't you give us the number of electrons instead of the number of protons? No, because they don't have to be the same. And that's what we're going to get into more today. Oh, because this is isotopic notation. Isotope. Right. So, so I wouldn't do that to you because then I would be asking you to take a leap there, right? Yeah. So when you say it's a way for you to trick us to give us the electrons, it's, but you wouldn't do that for an isotopic because we wouldn't be able to, thought, to figure it out, or you would? What I'm, what I'm saying is not that I'm trying to trick you with that. It's just that there is information that I can give you about an atom that is not relevant for all of the, the different types of problems that we're giving. Does that make sense? So there are some problems where the number of neutrons is totally unimportant, right? 
Um, there are some where the number of electrons is totally unimportant. Um, your job, and I would say the most complicated thing um, that, that students run into, is knowing which of those particles are important for which problem. Does that make sense, Sadie? So it's not like yeah, I'm, tr I'm not trying to mess with you, I swear, guys. But I do need to see that you guys understand that protons um, tell you about the identity of the element, neutrons tell you about the isotope, right? And electrons will tell you about the, the ion, which is what we're gonna talk more about today. Does that kind of track for you? Any other questions? Sorry, I was ignoring the chat. Go ahead, Jesse. Um, so that's one thing I was pondering when I was doing the homework. Is yeah. like, I thought, or maybe I'm confusing isotope and ion, but I thought electrons mattered, like that information was relevant. So I was wondering what, why that information isn't in this form of notation. Um, it's not relevant to the isotope, it's relevant to the ion. So let's give an example of that just so that we're not um, kind of talking hypothetically here. So um, let's say I have an ion with um, 20, see, 28 protons and 26 electrons, right? So we haven't talked about ion notation. but we can get to it right now. For ion notation, we write the chemical symbol and the charge as a superscript, okay? So, what is our X in this problem? Nickel. Nickel. So it would be N I, right? Now, just in case anybody was wondering how we figured that out, we're not wizards, right? 28 is the atomic number for nickel, right? Now, if we know we have 28 protons, right? What kind of charge do protons have? Positive. positive, right? So we have 28 positive charges. Oops, sorry guys. I can't see. Right? And if we have 26 electrons, how many negative charges do we have? Two. Two. Negative two? Two. Each electron has 26. 26. has a negative charge, right? So there's a negative 26 from our electrons, right? So what's my overall charge? Plus two. Plus two, right? So this would be nu nickel two plus. Some, it, some people will write the plus first, some people write it afterwards. I personally write the charge afterwards. But if you were to do that on a quiz, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mark you off. So question referring to the quiz. So how would you, how would we write that? Like how would you want it written in a quiz since we're limited with like, oh, like, okay, you can't put the symbol here or you can't like, to want it. Right. So probably um, the way that I would ask this question is in a way that you don't have to write this. <laughs> If that, I know that's kind of a, a weird way of saying it, but basically because you can't put superscripts into Canvas, um, I'm gonna find a way to ask a question that doesn't involve writing a superscript, right? So I might ask it as, uh, what would the charge on this element be given the number of protons or electrons and electrons given? Um, it could be um, which one of these ions um, belongs to um, this, set of subatomic particles. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so there's different ways that I could ask that question, but I'm never going to, 
I'm always trying to make it as easy for you guys to know how to put in an answer as possible, right? <sighs> Two green lines, John. Yeah, I don't know what that's about. <laughs> okay, you guys can you guys can see that too. One example like that, but with one that has an even odd number instead of an even number, I feel like I got it, but so we haven't talked about how to know what ions are yet okay so we're not there yet so um, so don't stress out also BT dubs this is not going to be on your quiz okay so the things that will be covered on the quiz I gotta meet mute guys Um, so the things that will be on the quiz will be um, isotopic notation, right? Um, do you know um, what the various subatomic particles mean, right? Um, do you know what defines a metal and a non-metal? And we'll review that in just a second. Um, electron configuration and um, the dimensional analysis word problem, right? Okay, so everybody clear on what? And again, if you're unsure and you don't remember this, that's okay. You can always go back and uh, look at the practice quiz. There's nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing um, that's on the practice quiz that's not represented on the actual quiz. I believe the actual quiz is seven questions as well. Same number, I think, as the the practice quiz, or maybe one more or one less. So. Is it? Did I, I feel like I'm missing something. Uh, I thought the practice quiz was only those dimensional analysis problems. Is there a different practice quiz? Let's, uh, let's go ahead and pause for a second.